but you're doing high volume output and you need a line that can just get on with that and run in complete automation. That is what this does. We've come to the Premium Power Factory in Finland and we're going to look at this amazing production line in their tech center right now. But this has got a PSBB. Now, Barry, what does that mean? So PSBB is punch, shear, buffer, bend. So basically what we've got here is a complete line that does the fully automated process of all of those uh, parts that I've just actually mentioned. Brilliant. Punching, so shearing, buffering, and bending. And that's all sheet metal fabrication. Um, but why would you need, I mean, we've seen sheet metal fabricators who have operators running uh, individual machines and taking parts between the machines to produce like a full component. Why would you want to have a full automated line? So this is basically so that you have the capability for your operators to do other things because this will run completely on its own. So if you are doing high volume, doesn't necessarily be mean high volume of the same thing, but you're doing high volume output and you need a line that can just get on with that and run in complete automation, that is what this does. So by high volume, you mean high total parts, but also maybe you could have lots of different kinds of parts. Of course, yeah, yeah. It, there's a flexibility in there to take the sheet metal from the raw material store that you see behind me, be that either a tower or the night train system, and literally run it through the line. It doesn't necessarily mean that the customer is producing the same thing over and over again. There could be variations on a theme. There could be a kit, for example, of a door where each door is slightly different. And let's move on to the first machine. Yes. So uh, this is a, a one of the punch, punch and shear machines. Yes. So basically what we've got here is the shear brilliance. Uh, so this is our uh, flagship uh, punch and shear system. This will take the raw material from the loading store, be that the night train or a tower, load the material sheet actually onto the machine table, execute all of the punch and form operations, and then go through to the shear. Now, being this, this being the flagship machine, we've got a 30 station turret, we've got 30 ton punch force, and each one of those turret positions can take the um, multi-tool systems that we have that are then able to have effectively an indexable turret within the turret. So you can literally put all of the tooling in there and leave the machine to get on with it. No tool changes. And I see the size of the, the storage uh, warehouse you've got here at the back, the automated storage is huge. It's about 25 meters long. It's a lot of material, I assume. So this machine needs to be pretty fast to rip through that material. Absolutely, yeah. And it, it's fully servo electric, very, very quick. Obviously, servo electric means low running costs, low maintenance as well. Um, able to keep up with the demand that the uh, production requires of it. What we're actually doing here as well is, as you'll see, the material's not going backwards into the store. This produces no skeleton. There, are, there is no waste skeleton to be dealt with, so the machine chops up any scrap pieces there are, including the trim strip across the Let's back. Let's keep going, because yeah. I, I think they put the, the, the kind of the trim scrap in here. You've got two chip bins. I guess, do some of these uh, handle uh, all the, the skeleton that's been chopped off? Yes, yes. But there's also going to be different kinds of parts coming off the punch machine, like different yep. sizes of parts in really different size profiles as well. Of course, yeah. So basically, we have between this machine and the end machine in the line, which is the bender, we have lots of options where we can handle the parts that are going between the two. Larger pieces, pieces that need to be bent, then go on down the line, and immediately the next stage is a buffering system. Okay, that, so this is the buffering system from the start of here, from the end of the punch. Yep, yeah, that balances the load between the punch and shear and the panel bender. So basically, both systems run together in unison as with the ball best balance of production load between the two of them, so they're not stopping and waiting for each other. Next stage in the line, of course, is the panel bender itself. That will then do all of the bending on the parts prior to output. So this will do all of the bent parts and bring them out from this, uh, this output unit here. And these parts can, you mentioned kits, don't necessarily have to be multiples of the same thing. This machine has got technology on it that is able to measure the bends as it produces them and learn the materials so that it can get one part out right first time. No pre-development, the machine can actually physically produce the part, get it right the first time, so if you're producing a one-off kit, you know those parts are going to be correct. And that's so important for automation because normally you have to kind of do a, a, a set of runs to make sure you're making good, good components. That's, a, that's going to waste energy, time, scrap material. Instead, with this machine, you can do it first time. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. It's measuring the parts as it produces them. It applies automatic corrections to, uh, to each bend and then learns from that. So when it comes to do the next bend on the same part, it already knows what to do. 
So that basically means you've got no scrap pieces. You're not having to do that pre-development. Brilliant. So right first time is really useful. Um, if we move on to, you've actually got some examples here of parts you've made. Now yes. these will be hand assembled normally at the end of this line. Yeah, so in this particular case, these are sample parts. These have been made as a kit. These have come off the line in kit production and uh, assembled literally as they've come off the machine. And there's been absolutely no human interaction from raw sheets um, to then individual components. Correct. But the people generally, this will go on to a, uh, another part of the factory where people are hand assembling this yes, normally. Yes, that's right, yeah. Um, but if needed, we can also put assembly technology in as well. That's completely possible. We can literally stack the parts up, we can stack them in kits, we can take them away, we can send them onto other processes, or we can put other automation at the end of the system that assemble all of the parts together and produces a finished assembly. And for sheet metal companies, for customers who are looking at this and saying, look, Barry, this is fantastic, but we're a bit too small for this right now, um, how can they start with this kind of automation, but on a, on a slightly smaller scale? Yeah, so that's completely possible. Everything Prima Power do is modular. We can start with the basic machine and we can add to it. You can grow your business um, and literally just keep adding the elements to it, the automation, the other machine processes, and connect them all together. Totally possible. But automated sheet metal fabrication with even options for assembly by uh, robotic assembly. And all the automation is totally ex expandable and extendable. So Prima Power can grow with you.